How's it going guys? Welcome to the FM Dugout. We're back with Rescue Rangers and in this episode we travel to Croatia to take on Split in the Euro Cup second qualifying round first leg. Um, so last time round we played Bala beaten 3-0 in Wales so we got through obviously and uh, let's have a look at how we got through. 9-0 uh, it was at Highbrox. 36 shots, 16 in target, 66% possession from us. Absolutely dominated the game. Bala didn't even get a shot on target. Um, and in this game, we were playing a couple of new players. So we had Tom Lawrence, uh, Jack Harper, uh, Zach Clough played against Bala, I think. Uh, Tom Lawrence getting on the score sheet three times, two assists. Harper scored twice. Um, not a bad performance from them at all. Um, off the bench, Bert Gray Garner. Gray getting his first Rangers appearance and grabbing himself an assist as well, so that's not too bad. Uh, just having a quick look at him to remind ourselves. Pretty decent prospect at 17 years old, I think. Um, he could have a lot of potential um, to be the kind of first choice Scottish left back. I am working on a foreign left back for the club, and if he signs, then uh, you'll know about it in the next episode. I'll keep that under wraps. Um, also looking at a young central defender as well and if that goes through again I'll call that out in the next episode um, one of the things to call out though I suppose from the squad if we take a look at the um, the squad at the moment you can see that we've got a large number of unregistered so obviously Fraser Aird is away on loan and I wouldn't have had him in my squad anyway Sassel's unregistered Grimmer, Benesser, uh, Crowley they're all out. Now, had they been here for the first squad selection, Benassar would have been in instead of Matt Crooks. Um, Sasso may have been in instead of Kiernan. Uh, Grimmer, possibly, if, if I could have fit him in. Obviously, with the rules around homegrown players um, and players that have come through from the club, it leaves us a bit close to the mark. You know, not able to get everyone in that we want to get in. But um, yeah, certainly we'll we'll see how it goes uh, from here with the the little adjustments you can make with the um, as you progress through the rounds. So anyway, um, yeah, there's no transfer news as such. Uh, <clears throat> overall balance of the club is now eight point one million, so we're doing not too badly in that front. Uh, season ticket sales continue to to come through, uh, <clears throat> and our wage budget committed spending is. 234,000 at the moment so yeah that'll be interesting to see um, how things go if, if we're that far under budget and um, we can actually do well in the league and in Europe um, I'll be more than happy um, so yeah let's uh, let's kick on with today's episode and uh, this game against Split uh, as you can see, it's cancelled both of my money generating uh, tournaments. Now I have to wait until I'm in a European competition that doesn't involve us starting in June. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. And also the Celtic game has now been moved from the start of the campaign. Wait a minute, what's going on here? 27th of the 2nd. Has it been moved? No, it hasn't been moved. I don't know what's going on with that piece at the top. Um, so, yeah, we've got a friendly against Everton. I tried to sneak in one <laughs> um, just to give us a, a more difficult opposition as well as, as potentially getting a bit of revenue in, but it hasn't been picked for TV um, by the looks of it. Uh, Celtic is still our first game of the season, uh, which comes just over a week after the game, the second game against Split. Uh yeah, that's weird. I don't know how it's saying we're playing Wraith. Um, it's bizarre. Wraith aren't even in the Labrooks Premiership, are they? Oh, they are there. Oh, <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I'll shut up. Um, one other thing. Uh, I have done a little bit of tweaking in terms of uh, the coaches at the club. Um, so if I look at the coaching staff here, I've brought in Mick Halsell uh, as head of youth development for the outgoing Craig Mulholland and if you look at the youth development stats pretty good it's got to be said and I'm, I'm fairly pleased with the coaching as well um, his reputation isn't fantastic 
Um, but if you look at where he came from, it was Peterborough. Um, no, that was playing stats. Where's his? Where is his? Don't know where you see his staff. I suppose it wouldn't show up under history, under achievements perhaps. Burton it was. So head of youth development at Burton. Um, his reputation, not fantastic, but his skills certainly seem to be there. Um, so we'll see how he gets on with, with our youth players and hopefully we'll, we'll see a, a bit of an improvement. Um, I had been looking as well at doing some changes to the scout staff. You can see we've got a lot of free spaces. Um, I brought in Derek Langley, formerly of Man United, as the chief scout. Uh, Adaptability is not particularly great, but if he's chief scout, primarily looking at the UK, then I think he'll be okay. Um, certainly, judging ability and potential um, is more than good enough. Uh, Ian Campbell, I think, was someone that was here before. Um, certainly was here last year. I can't remember if I signed him or not. Um, 14 and 17 for him. And Kevin Wilson, 10 and 13. I have been looking for scouts. I've just not been able to find uh, any that I'm, I'm kind of wanting to get in at the moment. Uh, I'm trying to get people who aren't British. So we have a bit more knowledge on the continent and try and tap into those other markets. Um, we'll see how that progresses. But yeah, anyway, today, let's, let's get on to the team selection and uh, today's match. So it looks as though Split are going to play a 4-2-2-2. Two, two, two. Um, quite defensive. Um, may actually cause us problems if they do that. Uh, potentially with a lot of our play going through the middle. May have to look to Tavernier and Wallace in the wings. Uh, just to give us uh, a way of breaking them down. And this is the team I'm going with today. I've decided to give debuts to Liam Cooper and Lewis Thompson. You know, Rob Kiernan's done absolutely fine in uh, in the games against Bala, but this is where I really want to try um, Cooper here today. Uh, with Fotheringham and McCrory, I might give McCrory the home match if we're comfortable enough after today. Um, what else have we got? Crooks on the bench. Thompson. Do I want Crooks on the bench if I've got Thompson there? Just trying to see how I can balance things out with Holt injured. Obviously, he won't be getting a go. Just Joe Dodu is an attacking midfielder. I'm not sure if Dodu's going to make it at the club. I might loan him out this year, um, as with Hardy. Hardy's contract's up and he's away on loan to Kilmarnock, so we'll see um, if he can actually uh, kick on and get some goals. Because if I'm going to play this formation, I'm not sure Hardy is the best person to have in, as a sole striker. But nor is Garner or Waghorn spending the money I have in Clough and putting a fair amount of uh, of trust in, in Clough and his ability to progress his career and develop. Um, yeah, I think we're okay with this. Burt gives us an attacking. Thompson gives us an attacking or can play in the deep line. Crooks, Garner. Yeah, I think we're okay with that. The only place we haven't really covered is right back. Um, if Tavernier gets injured, that's where McCrory would have helped out instead of Kiernan. But I'll leave Kiernan on instead. Uh, just take a risk. So if Tavernier gets injured, then it all comes back to this point. Okay, let's go. Uh, squad numbers. Might as well give Cooper three. Again, I haven't had to pick these numbers yet. So um, we'll get a chance to, to redo them in a couple of weeks, I would imagine. Um Okay, pundits are going for a draw in this game. Uh, who's their key man? This is their key man. Central defender. Yeah, pretty tidy. Um, not fantastic, I suppose. Uh, but let's go. Let's go. I think we should be looking to win this, um, without a doubt. Uh, rather not talk about that, to be honest. Okay, so they've actually gone with the 5-3-2 wing-back formation. So this will be interesting to see how we play off against them here. Um, Clough, obviously, against three central defenders might find that quite hard going. Um, we'll see how the game goes as it starts and adjust it if we need to. Um, we do have the ability to change to that sort of formation if we want to go like for like. Um... Wow, not amazing. 
was expecting a little bit more from them there. Rightio, we don't need latest scores, thank you very much. So this probably feels a lot more like a European tie than playing Bala Town. Um, a trip to Croatia and although we haven't actually made the trip, um, just playing a team uh, with foreign players I suppose as opposed to Welsh players um, just has that feeling of, of Europe a, a little bit more as uh, Vladovic plays it forward. If there are any Croatians watching this stream, I'll apologise well in advance for the pronunciation of the players in split. Uh, it's probably going to be a, an absolute slaughtering of their, their pronunciation. Uh, so, right, here we go. Rossiter should have come forward for that rather than stepping away. Zillow to Mezga. Thompson and Rossiter should be able to, uh, to cope with the midfield three, I think, with them both being competent ball winning midfielders um, as Barac gets to the byline, cuts it back and Lee Wallace gives away a foul, super 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 stuff uh, always get really frustrated giving away penalties uh, it just seems like such an easy way for the opposition to score as Barac will step up left footed, foddering him with the acrobatic one-handed save he looked like he was going to uh, his right and had to pull back in so Fodderingham gets Wallace out of jail um, I would say the way that the game is going at the moment the 5-3-2 is all over us so we may have to look at changing the formation uh, we're not keeping possession and let's just see if we can encourage the team for just now I'd like to get to half time if it's still now now at half time then I'll look at changing it at that point um, yeah don't look too threatening at the moment although that was slack and a quick break here from split Zillow looking for Barach threads it through to Mezga and slots it no off the post riding our luck here Definitely have to change it at half time. I'm probably taking a risk actually waiting until half time. Um, clear this a huge step up from Bala. Jack Harper's picked up an injury as well, so we will see at half time how that affects things. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Wow, that went down well. Uh, let's go and have a look at the tactics at the moment. So, naturally, I'm thinking of going to the 5-3-2. It is one of our formations that we have been playing rather than the wide one. Um, well, it still gives us a little bit of attacking prowess, I guess. <clears throat> um, if we put Clough in there... Um, Right, who's not playing particularly well out of Mackay and Lawrence? Mackay is 6.6 .6 and Lawrence is 6.6. .6. I think Lawrence is the better player in that position anyway, so we'll, we'll sacrifice Mackay for Garner. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll probably just do two ball-winning midfielders. Um, Wallace and Tavernier are okay, so... Yes, the last piece here will be Wilson and put Kiernan on. That's the wrong way around. So put Kiernan. Yeah, right, that should be better. Um, in terms of instructions, going wide is how we want to go. Overlap and whip. Okay. Um, let's get back to the team talk and see if we can just get people I suppose people didn't play that badly we just didn't create an awful lot and it looked as though Split were getting in behind us quite a bit so matching them or just about matching them we're keeping the, the attacking playmaker um, might be our best option here away from home certainly last year I noticed that in the league away from home uh, was where the 4-2-3-1 the narrow sometimes wasn't working for us um, I gotta say I'm a little bit disappointed at how the team are performing in the hole today but uh, let's see what I'm going to do push forward, I, I really want an away goal I don't want to, to have to rely on keeping a clean sheet or anything at Ibrox 
uh, guess we just haven't created any good chances to speak of uh, with nine shots two on target and not one of those has been a highlight for us a bit disappointing there and it definitely seems as though we'll be back for a second episode uh, or not a second episode second game of the episode as Barach gets away from Cooper Rossiter will close down and Mezga they look quite tidy to be honest split and they finished and got to be honest I mean in terms of the number of shots on target that's only the third shot on target I think it should be updating but yeah they deserve it I suppose um, Wallace playing Strahonia on side and tidy finish into the top corner there not much Fotheringham was, was going to be able to do with that and um, I don't want to go overload because I don't want to concede a second goal uh, it is disappointing and um, Wallace on 6.5 well up to 6.6 .6 now Garner 6.5 Clough 6.6 .6. not enough people have performed today and uh, at home we're going to have to do much better uh, let's try to get something maybe in the last five minutes I think the thing that's most disappointing is it just hasn't been a single highlight of ours to speak of it's, it's pretty toothless to be honest um, and that that is the most disappointing factor for me uh, Joe Garner 6.4 now Tavernier wins it back. Thompson is away. Not the player who really want breaking into the box. And that's why. Um, just doesn't have the kind of attacking uh, mentality to really drive on and, and have a shot at goal. So, well defended there from split. And that will be full time. 1-0 loss away from home. Um, yeah, it was disappointing. And gonna have to do a little bit of work I think for the next game uh, use the club doctor two to three days okay that's Harper possibly out of contention for the next one um, all right guys um, I'll be back in a second for the next game uh, the next leg see if we can turn around this 1-0 defeat if we can't then this is going to be a long season um, or maybe a very short one. The club might just say, "Right, you're gone." I'll be back in a minute. Okay, guys, we're back for the second leg against Split, and uh, the two signings I was talking about they have gone through. So let's just take a look at them. So we've got Alexander Butner from a free transfer, formerly of Manchester United. Again. Maybe a little bit disappointing that it's going to be someone that I'm going to be unlikely to fit into my European squad. Very, very good player by the looks of things. Possibly lacking a little bit in the, the mental side of things. Obviously, determination. I've been trying to get a determined squad. Um, but I'm looking at, you know, work rate, aggression are quite high. So, you know, it's still a decent amount of, of kind of fight in the player. Physicals are pretty good as well. Fairly quick. Um, but it's more for the technical side of things. If you look at uh, this guy as a free kick special or dead ball specialist, crossing um, as well as high. So, I mean, well, I say specialist, 14 and 12 are pretty decent. Uh, 15 crossing, 14 dribbling, 14 first touch. Uh, long shots, 15. His passing side, I mean, the technique, 15 for the left back. He can play in a multitude of positions. Um, so, yeah. I'm, I'm quite pleased with, with bringing him in. Um, he was on loan at Dynamo Moscow um, wrong one, last season. 7.49, 16 games is not too bad at all. And I think given the way that my fullbacks are attacking, it should work quite well. Um, and we also got Julio Pleguzello, a former Arsenal youngster, um, who was away at Mallorca last year. Um, 28 games there, so a decent number of games under his belt. And I think, he, again, he looks like a good prospect. Um, and he's actually a ball-playing defender, which is something that I, I would like to have in the team um, so that I have the ability of um, either going long or starting things from the back. Um, Vision-wise in that regard is not particularly good, so you'll need to, to kind of improve on that. Um, 
But with Plague Zello, I promised to play him in the cup games uh, this season, which I don't think is, is too tall an order. Um, but it, what it does mean is we've now got five central defenders in two spaces, so there's going to have to be a bit of rotation going on. Either that or I'll look to loan out Plague Zello or potentially sell uh, Kiernan or Wilson um, or <laughs> Sasso or Cooper. I don't know. It depends how well um, they take to the team. So anyway, that takes us into today's match. Um, now, again, split, I, I doubt very much that that is what they're going to play. Um, I am still going to keep faith with 4-2-3-1. I firmly believe that at home, this will work. Um, what I've done as well is I've changed Jack Harper for John Thompson today, um, just because I think Thompson, that is his favoured position. Um, it's not Harper's, and Thompson... Is looking like a pretty decent prospect at the moment um, and hasn't really let me down when he's played. Um, not too sure about here. I might actually just do, as I say, two ball winning midfielders, um, unless I think uh, maybe a deep lying for Rossiter instead. And if Thompson is a ball winning midfielder. Uh, on the bench, I've dropped Garner for Waghorn. I'm still sticking with Clough. Um, no goals in three games when, when two were against Balotelli was a little bit disappointing it must be said and early signs maybe indicating that it was a a silly <laughs> a silly move from my part but 12 goals in 28 games last season okay Sky Bet League 1 um, still should be able to do it Fotheringham will start I'm not going to give McCrory uh, the pressure of, of dealing with overturning a 1-0 defeat so um yeah, it looks as though the pundit is siding with them, which is a little bit disappointing. And they've gone with the wing-back formation again. Um, I think what I'll do this time is I'll go in hard on the two wing-backs. Um, and we owe them, right? That usually gets people um, fired up for the game. And it looks as though that certainly got the right uh, kind of look to it. So European night at Ibrox once more. Will it be the last of the season? Um, God, it'll be really, really disappointing if it is because I was hoping to at least make it to the group stages this year for this squad and split already have a corner 14 seconds in. Um, not looking fantastic. And we're getting a highlight from it, which is even more worrying. And... Rossiter heads it clear out for a throw in so at least we dealt with that um, and let's see if we can settle into the game uh, passionately encourage and see if we can get the lads to, to get fired up for this game certainly looks more like I was expecting in terms of, of the, uh, the stats being at home but being 1-0 down the longer the game goes at 0-0 the more nervy things will get and now split come forward, Mastorovic, Mezga, that's a red card, well done Lewis Thompson, we are out of Europe, <laughs> that is just, no, how did he not get a red card for that, that was absolutely brutal, um, but they may still score from here, uh, Clough will pick it up, launches it over the top, Thompson breaking away on his favourite left foot, he scores. Um, looking at how he took that shot, I don't know how the keeper didn't save that. It was pretty central. So we turned from potentially going out with a red card uh, for Lewis Thompson, which didn't go through, and then we broke up the park from the free kick, and we've scored. So, yeah, fine margins, fine margins indeed. Um pretty happy with things at the moment then as far as as I say the stats are concerned this is exactly how I thought we would probably play at home uh, again split I did actually cancel the friendly with Everton so I never mentioned um, just felt it was a, an overhead I didn't really need at this moment in time it risked injuring players um, Mackay with the corner cleared away Mackay will chase it down picks it up support inside Rossiter first time pass didn't really work out Cooper 
flick to Lawrence. Lawrence kind of gives it away. With a lot of bodies in front of them. Clough to Mackay. Bottom corner. And I suppose you could argue there it was um, it was a, an opportunity there for Clough to shoot, but he had the awareness to find Mackay in a better position. Mackay was offside there, I think. He, he looked like he might have been half a yard offside. Um, I won't be complaining, though. So Clough now with two assists to his name. So even if he's not scoring, if he's contributing to the game, then that is probably going to be good enough. Zillow now coming forward against Thompson, who should have been sent off, I think. Um, certainly judging from the 3D uh, clip, I would have said he should have been off. Zillow now through Barac. Of course, a split score and away goal. That puts them through and away goals, and Fotheringham did really well there. So, I mean, the tie is certainly not over. Not by a long shot. We need, I would say, another two goals before we could feel comfortable. Um, <clears throat> but I don't see the point in changing the formation at this stage. I think we are in control. As we might get another chance before half-time. Roster out wide to Wallace. First time cross fizzed in. Roster picks it up. Tavernier's in lots of space over on the right. Thompson loses out. Mezga now counter-attack here for split. Zillow up against Wallace. Wallace wins it back. And Clough breaks through. Can he get his first goal for the club? He slots it under the keeper. 3-0. Perfect time to score as well. Half time. Right on the stroke of half time. 3-0 up. 3-1 in aggregate. We should be safe. But I'm not going to uh, say that we're definitely through. It's a nice calm finish from Clough there. Didn't blast it, just placed it home for his first goal for the club. What an important goal. Two assists and a goal in this game for Clough. Certainly proving my doubts pre-match uh, were completely unfounded. Um, <clears throat> I think what we want to say is assertively to keep it going. And that's a good response from the team. Um, nearly all positive. No point in changing anything around at half-time. It is working. The only thing I might look doing later in the game is, is possibly, um, I'm looking at Lawrence there, yellow card 6.9, either bringing him off for Burt or possibly getting someone in the, the central mid area, um, you know, to go to three central mids. Lawrence losing out again. Lawrence not having his best of games today. Uh, neither is Roster or Thompson. There's a few kind of standouts. The defence are playing pretty well. Cooper winning it back there with the interception. Mackay, who's just signed a new contract, and I can't remember when it was till 2020, I think. Given away by Thompson. The other Thompson now to Rossiter, to Lawrence. Will he shoot from outside the box? He does. He smashes it home. 57 seconds after the restart. 4 0 now. Surely that has to be the game and has to be the tie. Lawrence. Finding the gap there in the defence, firing at home, lovely finish. Um, it just goes to show you sometimes you just have to give people a chance when they're at something like 6.9. Not everyone can play, um, you know, 7.5 or above in every game. But certainly we now look like we're in a commanding position and we'll give it a little bit longer just so that we don't rock the boat too much before we make changes. Tavernier free kick off the wall. He looked like he was going for that top right hand corner. And it may mean Lawrence gets the next one because Tavernier um, <clears throat> and Lawrence, I think, have pretty similar uh, free kick abilities. Tavernier, two failed crosses there. Lewis Thompson, Mackay. Wallace is completely unmarked in the left. And it's moments like that you get really frustrated that the players don't spot those passes and the vision of them aren't that bad as Barrett gets in. And there we go. That's the away goal. That's the thing we had to be wary of. They've now scored, and another two goals for split. We'll see them through and away goals. Uh, just caught a little bit flat-footed there. Fotheringham comes out and probably could have done a little bit better there. Um, didn't really make himself big. He kind of flopped under himself a little bit. 
and certainly that puts the edge back in the game I'm just looking at the the yellow cards in that midfield area and just wondering whether or not now I need to rein it in a bit or make some changes Thompson as I say should have been off earlier in the game I think what I'll do is I'll move Rossiter I think I'll swap them over um, to make Rossiter the ball winning and Thompson the deep line playmaker and now yeah I think I'll bring Jordan Thompson there and <clears throat> I think I'll actually go with Harper here um, as an advanced playmaker for now just until it gets a little bit later and then I'll possibly give a bit more time to Burt if, if the game is at that point um, beyond any doubt um, so we'll get Harper on say it takes away one of the yellow cards uh, in, in midfield although Thompson's now just gone and got a yellow card so that's not much better um, <laughs> right 60 minute mark it just, I guess we have to be wary of, of the counter attacks as Mackay gets a free kick nope, not going to get a goal from that and doesn't look like Split are really breaking up the park with any real kind of urgency which you think they would be um, right, 70 minutes roughly if I could get another goal I would certainly look at making the substitutions at that point corner, Clough goes down and it's a penalty so the chance to put this tie beyond any doubt here and I think Barry Mackay is the one who will be taking it I think he has the highest penalty taken out of the, the starting lineup. It is higher than Clough which was surprising to me strikers usually have a pretty good penalty taking stat big moment for Mackay here and he slots it calmly into the bottom right corner 5-1 now that's the game beyond any doubt and I think as I say I'll probably look at making a substitution or two at this stage and yeah we'll make one now um, I do really want to see Liam Burt push on um, so can I move Lawrence into that position can't, oh god he's not very good um, I think perhaps just taking Lawrence off on a yellow card um, Clough has done really well also um, but I'd like to give Waghorn a quick run out uh, <clears throat> actually making his European debut here I think yeah maybe a little bit foolish making two changes like that when potentially you could collapse and you'd get a red card or an injury or something but I think you should be okay now Clough, will he score? He does, just before he gets taken off. Super performance from Clough today. Two goals and two assists. Um, and his reward is he gets hooked straight away. Harper infield. Mackay, lovely through ball. Maybe a little bit heavy, but Clough managed to get there and from a tight angle puts it in. And 6-1 now on the day. I think we do actually look like a pretty good team uh, at home. I don't know whether it's something we can develop away from home to, to get these kind of performances or whether I perhaps need to have a different formation. Um, maybe just look to keep things tight and, and try and, and hit teams on the counter. Um, I might look at doing something like that. Uh, <clears throat> you know, as the teams get a bit more difficult that we, we face, um, we might have to do that. But Split with another chance, Fotheringham gets a hand to it and can't keep it out. It's taking the shine off the win here. 6-3 in aggregate now. So three goals for split. We'll see them go through. I can't see him scoring three goals in 15 minutes. Um, unless something major happens. Fotheringham though will be disappointed. He didn't get a stronger hand to that. Uh, 6.3 from Fotheringham is not particularly good. Um, so assuming we do get through here it's going to be Partizan or Robotniki um, not actually sure how the first tie went in that game uh, or how it's going at the moment indeed but I guess we'll find out um, and that will be the next episode or actually Celtic is the first game next um, it might actually be yeah it might cover the Celtic game 
and then uh, come back for the European game. Certainly it doesn't look as though we're going to whitewash these teams, so um, we do want to kind of cover them as the main talking point of the season. As Split come forward again, and this is where we have to be very, very careful. Wilson can't win it back. Tavernier is chasing back. Baric will look for the ball into the middle, and that was a bit too far, but Zarovic plays it back in. Rossiter away. It's a pretty nervy ending to the game, um, although I've just seen the time. It's actually 90 minutes, so it doesn't really matter if they score, but as I say, it takes, it takes that shine off the victory. 6-1 um, would have been a really good result for us. 6-2 um, looks a little bit more disappointing. 6-3, oh dear goodness, Fotheringham. <coughs> Fotheringham's going to get dropped for the next game. That is three goals where I think he could have done a lot better. Um, and now this game just looks as though we've had a really shaky game defensively. And we haven't. Fotheringham has really, really let the team down there. Um, and that'll be the game now. That's, I shouldn't be disappointed if I were through, but that... Those goals, the last two goals, Fotheringham should have done far better with. Um, hmm. Maybe the substitutions did have an impact on it, doing too many of them, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but we're through. Um, I'm not going to say any more than a cam well done. Uh, Zach Clough picking up man of the match, 9.6. Pretty good going there from him. Um, so who are we facing now? Does it tell us here? Partizan. Probably what I would have expected, to be honest. Um, so what have we had? Suduva, the one five one in aggregate. And then they, they narrowly got through against Robotniki. They fell apart away from home. So again, depending on the, the ties, um, is it away from home first? Yeah. So away from home in the first leg. And then uh, it will be Ibrox. And hopefully we'll, we'll see the same sort of thing. So we actually play them before Celtic. So probably what I'm going to be doing is an episode that's going to have three live comms in it, potentially. Um, <laughs> so um, that'll be an interesting one to do. Anyway, guys, I um, have rambled on for a little bit. Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing the new squad take shape um, and seeing our European journey continue. did look a little bit dodgy after that first leg defeat. But we're still in it. Uh, we still got a chance of making the Europa League group stages. If you've liked this episode, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps me out. And uh, until the next time, guys, I'll see you when I see you.